This coming Saturday, two UCI rainbow jerseys will be awarded to the two riders crowned eSports world champions. Coming up, everything you need to know about the event on Zwift, which looks very different to any of the previous championships. But before we get onto that, let's remind you of what happened last year. We are here in the Big Apple at the World Championships. It's a long one. We need to ease ourselves into this one. It's going to be wonderful, isn't it? Adahase goes on the front there, just deploying the featherweight pair of 100 metres to go now. Zoe Langham also there too, but it's going to be out. Lewis Adahase, I think, is going to take this one. She surges clear. What a brutal turn of pace by the rider from the Netherlands. And with it, she takes the title. Osborne is absolutely flying. He's used the aero power up on this flatter section to catapult him past the Austrian. This is G-Vine! G-Vine is coming through for Australia! Vine is there! Looks like Vine is going to take it on the line. G-Vine is the world champion. G-Vine, the winner of the Zwift Academy, takes the title. 2023 marks the third edition of the eSports World Championships on Zwift, with previous winners being Jason Osborne and Ashley Mormon Pasha back in 2020, and then Lois Adderhaste and Jay Vine just last year. Of those, only Adderhaste and Osborne are competing this Saturday, but we'll get onto the main favourites a little bit later. First up, though, we better explain the brand new format. Well, before we do that, Sire, we better also let everybody know that you will be able to catch all of the action live on GCN Racing's YouTube channel, and it's going to be fantastic, I've got to say. Manon's going to be in an auditorium in Glasgow where 10 of the riders are competing in the event, and I'll be joined here in the studio by Nathan Guerra and Hannah Walker to give their expert opinion and analysis. Uh, coverage is going to start at 1800 GMT, and the first men's race will start about 15 minutes after that, with the women's races coming second. But yes, on to the format this year. And I think you're better placed to talk about this side because you've actually competed in this very format against fellow GCN presenters, haven't you? Yes, not a world championship, uh, of course, but uh, the GCN presenter championships, which are just as important. A lot of pride at stake, albeit with no rainbow bands on the line. No. Um, no, and not, I lost not, that my you, pride. not that you were close to the win, <laughs> no. were you, Si, as we will see shortly. Uh, but tell us about the format then, because it's not like the last two events where the first rider across the line of a single race was the winner, is it? Well, no. I mean, it's still first across the line in the final race that wins, but this year there are a total of three rounds for the men and the women. The first race of the three is called the punch. It sounds really complicated, okay, but it's totally not, right? So around 100 women and 100 men will line up for their respective events, but only 30 of each will progress to round two. So mm. the first 30 riders across the line get through, 70 their race is over, their yeah. world's is done. After about 15 minutes, which is yeah. really cruel, isn't it? Uh, that round one takes place, as they all do actually, on a brand new course, isn't it? The first time that Zwift has ever designed a world specifically to host the eSports World Championships. So it's based in Glasgow in Scotland, which will host a whole load of other UCI World Championship races in August this year. In fact, there are going to be over 200 rainbow jerseys awarded over an 11-day period wow. for pretty much every cycling discipline that you can think of. Yeah, that is going to be quite the 11 days, isn't yeah. it? Uh, you'd think almost cheapens rainbow jerseys if you know the 200. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, right, all will be hard fought, undoubtedly. Um, back to Saturday, though, and that first round, it's only 14.2 kilometres long, with 106 metres of total elevation gain, and there's going to be a really fine line between not doing too much, but also doing enough that you're not eliminated. Now, ideally, you'd want to finish 30th, wouldn't you? Mm. Having saved the most energy possible, but being anywhere around 30th, coming towards the line, is going to be a very risky game Crikey. to play. It would be, wouldn't it? Yeah. I mean, if you do finish 30th, you're going to thank your lucky stars, aren't you? You just pipped it. Yeah. Uh, the second round is called The Climb. Kind of says it already in the name, except that there are not just one, but three short, punchy climbs in the space of just 8.6 kilometres, with a total of 160 metres of elevation gain. That one is going to be particularly intense, as Sai knows. By the end of round two, as mentioned, 20 more men and 20 more women will be eliminated, leaving just 10 to fight it out for the medals and the coveted rainbow jerseys in the third and final round. Yes, a final round that is fittingly called the podium, and it is a particular particularly cruel finale, like really cruel. <laughs> so twice per lap on a hilly criterium style circuit, one rider from each race is going to be eliminated until just three remain. So the last rider 
across the line twice per lap gets pulled out there no. and then. Don't get to finish the race no. even. And unbelievably, the first of those eliminations comes after just 1.6 kilometers of that race, or just one mile. So it's gonna be a really, really painful start, especially considering the efforts that have already come beforehand in the first two rounds. Yeah, and it is at the top of a really steep little climb <laughs> as well. The final elimination comes with just one of the five laps remaining, after which there will be three riders left in each race, who will, of course, get to fight it out on the finish line to decide the order of the podium and indeed who becomes the 2023 world champions. So the key with the podium race is A, to be concentrating hard and then B, know the rules, unlike Ollie. We've lost Ollie. No, we haven't. I thought it's every lap. No, half lap. Yeah, it's, it's every lap. You've said it a million times, you div. Oh, <laughs> oh. Unbelievable. And he's got a PhD, he's a doctor. Yeah. Oh, isn't he? he can't read the rule book though. <laughs> uh, he did miss out one key to the podium race though, Si, and that is that you need to be very strong, don't you? Unlike you. <laughs> so that, that, that cuts to, that cuts to you being yeah. devastated. Yeah. I think I'm out. I'm out. I'm so annoyed. Like, so annoyed. So there's two sprint points a lap. The first one is up, a real nasty little kicker. No stress, feeling good. Second one is a flat one. Ah, oh, just got my positioning wrong. You were genuinely absolutely gutted and devastated I was. going out there, weren't you? I was, I played it perfectly up to that point, And then I just, well, I mean, I'm not very good at sprinting. I completely <laughs> messed it up. And possibly maybe I just didn't want it enough, unlike Sebastian Haydo of GCN and Espanol, who was down to the final three with Hank and Connor. Yeah! Sí! Sí! I'm going out on a limb here, Si, but I have a hunch that Sebastian Haydo was quite pleased with his win in the GCN presenter race. Yeah, I mean, it was a fairly subdued celebration, I think, wasn't it? Sí! Weird thinking of himself alone in that room, <laughs> yes. celebrating like that. Um, anyway, for those of you who haven't watched that video, it is a brilliant insight into this brand new format, which personally, I'll be honest, I was a little bit like, not skeptical beforehand, but I didn't understand it. But having seen it, I just think it's brilliant. Yeah. I think it's gonna be amazing. It's a lot of action packed into about 45 minutes of total racing for both yeah. men and women, isn't it? Now, just before we move on to all of the important power-ups on Zwift, we mentioned earlier that this is the first cycling world championships taking place in Glasgow this year, but there will be loads more this coming August. Let's take a look. That will be the first ever Super Worlds that incorporates so many disciplines into the same event. And we will, of course, have coverage of those events on GCN Plus. Territory restrictions do, though, apply. Right, on to the power-ups, and there's another change there this year. There are two power-ups on offer over the three rounds, but everybody is going to receive the same power-up to make things there. It's up to the riders to basically decide when is best to deploy them. Yeah, I think that's a good change as well, actually. Yeah. In rounds one and three, then, you'll get the burrito at certain points on the course, which makes you undraftable for 30 seconds. Basically, that means that nobody behind you is getting an advantage from your virtual slipstream. This would then be best saved for the sprint to the line, probably, in my opinion, but then what do I know? <laughs> yes. uh, basically, uh, I was the last to the line and no one was in my slipstream anyway. Anyway, it's gonna be very interesting to see where more experienced Zwifters mm. decide to use yeah, it. Yeah, I'll be interested to see where they use it as well. Uh, it would also be useless to me, the burrito, because there'd be nobody behind me, so I wouldn't affect anyone. Anyway, in round two, the power-up is then the anvil, which makes you heavier for 30 seconds. So the only place you want to use that one is on a descent, where it's going to allow you to go faster for the same effort. Pray for anybody that accidentally deploys Ooh. the anvil on a climb, because it's going to make them slower rather than faster. Yeah, it has happened before. It has it? happened before, yes. Mark Threlfall from the Triathlon Network. Oh, did he? Yeah, he did it as well. And actually, 
I've got to say, it's incredibly effective when used properly. Like, incredibly effective on the descent. So watch, watch out for that <laughs> one with interest. Uh, anyway, those are the details of the format for this year. Next, we'll get on to the favourites. But before we do, let's hear from a couple of the most prominent riders taking part this year. Do you see it as good preparation for your road season? I, I assume, are you starting at Omlo Pet Newsblad again the week after the World Championship? Yes, indeed, I started at Omlo Pet Newsblad. Um, and it's, it fits in and it's also because of this format, uh, the three times 15 to 20 minutes that it fits in very well in my preparation, uh, like one week in advance, it's good to dig deep the, the, the day after I'll also dig deep on training and then it's about tapering off, uh, to the competition. And are you in it to win it? Do you think? My main goal is, and I would be very, very happy if I can survive the first round uh, there's uh, actually not uh, one cell in my brain that is thinking about the fact that I would make it to the third round. How do you go about recovering between three such short and intense events? Because we think there's going to be sort of 10 to 12 minutes between the end of round one and start of round two and the end of round two and start of round three. Is there anything special that you're you're contemplating doing or is it just a case of, of spinning the legs, keeping the fluids going? I think I'll definitely still try and spin the legs for sure. Um, make sure I'm getting on plenty of fuel on board because you're there's such punchy efforts. Um, but yeah, apart from that, maybe recovering from a few vomits. <laughs> Describe your home setup to us. Is there anything special that you're doing there? Yeah, this year for me, it's um, again like a... Yeah. Uh, Swift World Championships like I did in 2020, so not from from home, um, because uh, I will be uh, racing at the UAE Tour. So um, yeah, with it being two days before the start of that, um, I will already be in uh, Abu Dhabi, and then I will be racing from from there. And in terms of team tactics, do you think they're going to come into play much? Well, the British team is a big, strong team, so I expect some team tactics from them uh, maybe USA but it's already a smaller team and the other countries have yeah just one or two strong riders not really enough to play with the team tactics now what was really interesting about Victor Campenart's interview there was how little chance he feels he's got of getting into the final or maybe even to get into round two and given that he'll be racing Omloop Het Newsblad just one week after, where he'll probably start as one of the top 10 favourites to win, I think that shines a light on just how good the other competitors are now. Yeah, and how specialised it has mm. become as well. The top men and the top women are putting out huge power, yeah. aren't they? And you're really going to need that with the three rounds that are only 15 minutes of effort each. It's a high octane. Shall we say, it, it is, it is, with lots of efforts in a short period of time. And a great format for television, I would say as well. Anyway, riders from 23 nations around the world are going to be competing this Saturday. Uh, 25 in each race gain their entry through the continental qualifiers, which are open to anyone, whilst the rest of the selection is made through national federations and wildcard entries. So, who can we expect to be at the forefront? Well, we should start with the two riders who have been world champions in this discipline before, Jason Osborne and Lois Adderhaste. Osborne won in 2020, which drew the attention of a number of pro teams because he's actually best known as an Olympic level mm. rower and had only just started racing a bike at that point. Yes, he now rides professionally for Alperson de Koenig on the road, but is back to Zwift to try and regain his eSports world championship crown. Now, having never finished lower than third, you'd imagine, He's got a pretty good chance of doing exactly that, even with the change in format. But then again, he hasn't actually raced, as far as I can see, on Zwift since the last World Championships. Interesting. Mm. Ada Hayes, meanwhile, has already raced on the road this year for her new team, FDJ Suez. And with great success, she finished just outside the top 10 overall at the Santos Tour Down Under and then went on to win the Cadell Evans Great Ocean Road Race not long after. Mm. That said, she also hasn't raced on Zwift since December, so her specific form to the platform I guess still has a slight question mark over it, but either way, she'll start as one of the big favourites, quite obviously. Uh, let's go on to a few more of the men's favourites then, starting with the man that Nathan Guerra thinks is the favourite for the race, Mark Mading 
of Germany. So he dominated the last round of the Zwift Grand Prix, leaving everyone standing on the Healy KOM. What makes his uh, race favourite status even more remarkable, though, is that he doesn't have a background in road racing and only just started Zwift racing over a year ago. Yeah, he's got quite the story, actually. I was reading about it the other day. My favourite, though, is Freddy Ovet, who does have a background in road racing, but who's really specialised in Zwift racing since kind of the start of lockdown, I think it was. Uh, this new format is a bit of an unknown for him, but he was second last year, and I know that he really, really focuses a lot of his attention on the eSports World Championships. Yeah, two more names that will be familiar to those of you who have watched the Zwift Racing League are James Barnes and Lionel Vuyasin. The latter leads a strong Belgian team, and although his results of late haven't been quite as good as they were in the past, I don't think you can count him out, can no, you? No, I think he'd be quite a popular winner, wouldn't he? He would, yeah. Uh, Barnes, meanwhile, just won the Glasgow Crit Exhibition race and is very canny when it comes to tactics and gameplay on Zwift. He'd also be a very popular winner, I'd say. He would, yeah. Sure. Uh, other names to watch out for include Oscar Ville, who's been training very specifically for this event, Anders Folliger, a former podium finisher, Zach Nair, who's always very consistent, and Canadian Thomas Thrull, who's been smashing the Next Cup and Tiny Races just recently. On to the riders that we expect to be at the forefront of the women's race, and I'll start with Zoe Langham of Great Britain, actually arguably the most complete and dominant rider in Zwift racing as of late. I think she's really suited to this event, you know, because she's got well, not really any weaknesses in any area. No, she? a lot of people are talking about her as the favourite to win. That said, she does work an awful lot of hours as a doctor. Yes. So she's been try finding it hard to fit the training in. Uh, Kristen Kulczynski, meanwhile, is another familiar name to those of you who watch the Zwift Racing League. And I know that she's incredibly focused on being at her very best this Saturday. Uh, she loves to go on the attack, Kulczynski, she does, doesn't she? Yeah. But she's also been working hard on her explosivity on the shorter climbs, which I think is going to be really, really important in this brand new format in order for her to make it through to the final. Yeah. God, yeah, it really is, isn't mm. it? You've got to go off the start line pretty quick. Yeah, you know where you need to work on, don't you? Well, yes. Unlike Zoe Langham, I am not strong in all areas. <laughs> I'm weak in all areas. Now, one rider who you should have seen at the Zwift Academy last year, but who unfortunately didn't get to watch because she got COVID having travelled all the way from America to Spain was Liz Van Howling. Anyway, she will no doubt be racing with a point to prove on Saturday night. And I would absolutely love to see her win, I've got to say, and come back to Zwift Academy for next year. It would be redemption for her, wouldn't it? It would, I mean, wouldn't it? Yeah. It must have been heartbreaking to oh. get all the way there to the finals and it, not be able to start them. Other riders to watch include Hayley Simmons, Mary Wilkinson, Lizzie Brooke, former BMXer, Ariel Vaharan, former Zwift Academy winner, Tanya Eraf, Lam Kong of Hong Kong, who could be a surprise, mm -hmm. could she? And Marlene Bierhead, who has to be one of, if not the most experienced riders on the start line, having competed in over 500 Zwift races. That's bonkers, isn't yeah. it? And how many kilometres you've done on Zwift? I must look that up before yeah. Saturday. Uh, now, a couple of bits of housekeeping. Uh, Zwift and the UCI have gone to great lengths to ensure that this is a fair competition. And as such, all riders have been sent a brand new calibrated Wahoo Kicker indoor trainer so that it's comparable across the board between the riders. Yeah, further to that, all in-game equipment will be standardised so there's no advantages to be gained there. Plus, the International Testing Agency will be implementing a structured anti-doping system and Zada, so that's Zwift's own digital anti-doping agency, will ensure that there's nothing dodgy going on with any of the equipment, the weigh-ins, or the subsequent performances. Mm. Now, on our side, we will be having a watch slash ride along with the GSIN club on Zwift. So if you'd like to watch the action whilst riding at the same time, we'd love for you to join us. I obviously won't be because I'm presenting the show on Saturday night. That's a good that's excuse, my excuse, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Uh, you'll be able to find details of how to do just that in the description just below this video. Right, let us know what you think of this new format and indeed who your favourites are for each race in the comments section down below. And of course, make sure you join us on Saturday, 1800 hours GMT, to see all the action unfold. Well, I guess that we should name our favourites for the races on Saturday night, as is customary Ooh. for a big race preview show. Would you like to go first or shall yes, I? Yes, please. Go on then. Uh, I think Lois Adahaste. Again, I think she's going to double up for the women. Mm. And then in the men's, I'm going to go for James Barnes, actually. Um, ah. Sorry. 
Yes, I have I nicked go. it? You have nicked it, yes. I was going to go for two heart picks, two people that I really wanted to win. That was going to be James Barnes. I'll get back to the You can men's. have James Barnes. All right, I'll go for James Barnes as well. Uh, and on the women's side, I would like to see Kulczynski take the win, just because she's really only known as a Zwift racer. She barely ever races outside. She's got her own jewellery business as well. So I think that sort of story, being specialised in the Zwifting aspect of things and taking a win in the World Championships, would be a really special one. So I'm rooting for both of them. Yeah, no, I get that. I think the thing with Anna Hayes that was cool, though, is that she was a Zwift racer that has now gone yeah, on the road. that is cool, yeah. And is now, like, smashing it on the road in the World Tour as well. And that's going to make it very interesting to see how she adapts going back to yeah. Zwift on Saturday, won't, won't it? it just? Uh, right, well, we hope you're looking forward to it as much as we are. As I said, make sure you join us at 1800 GMT on Saturday evening. We'll see you then.